All right, fellas, we got the party started with the low tiers, and now we're kicking into gear with the mid tiers. Listen, we know you're all excited about the top and the high tiers, and we know you're all rooting for the low tiers, but the mid tiers are the ones you've really got to look out for. These characters are upset machines. They're just the kind of character that a good player can pick up, master, and use to upset a top 20 player in bracket. In Ultimate, there are so many well-balanced characters that a ton of the cast ends up in mid-tier, but unlike in Melee or other fighting games, that doesn't doom them to obscurity. Instead, it makes them the hidden counterpicks, just waiting to spoil someone's tournament. Don't go ignoring the mid-tiers, this is where you can find that pocket pick. These guys, gals, birds, monkeys, dogs, and blue hedgehogs make for a great main too, as long as you're willing to put that time in and help push their meta. Alright, you know we're about to get into it, but before we do, if you're looking for something to help you optimize your character and your game, take a look at ProGuides.com. We've got lessons from the pros, advanced character guides, and coaching sessions too. We even now have a pro course taught by MKLeo himself. Go on to ProGuides.com now and get our pro pass to get access to his course right now. Now let's get started with the C tiers, the characters that have broken out of low tier. Speaking of breaking out of low tier, that's just what Mewtwo did in our 5.0 tier list. We had him in low tier because he has a bad combination of a big hurtbox and lightweight. His tail had a hurtbox on it which made him much easier to hit when dashing away and after using certain moves. However, in patch 4.0, Mewtwo received a hurtbox reduction, on top of buffs to up smash, confusion, and back throw. Since Mewtwo already has some pretty good tools like Shadow Ball and some pretty good hitboxes, that bumps him up to C tier. Hopefully he starts getting a bit more attention too. His old fans like SDX and Wadi have left him since Smash 4, hurting his results. While Mewtwo is the only mover in this tier, there are characters we think will make moves soon. Rosalina and Luma is one of those characters. Rosa's actually a bit like Mewtwo. She's got a big, tall hurtbox, and she's lightweight, which hurts her defense. But she's got a lot of tools in neutral and some really great hitboxes and options. Rosa's sharp drop in dominance from Smash 4 to Ultimate scared her mains off. Now, at least one of them has returned, DeBuzz. And he's making her look scary. We think that as competitors like DeBuzz find new tech for Rosa, she'll start looking more like her old Smash 4 self in no time. Did somebody say Smash 4 meta picks that got nerfed into mid-tier in Ultimate? You can't say those words without talking about Bayonetta. Bayo struggles to kill, and suffers from jank that makes her combos too easy to break out of. It also hurts that she's got less tools and speed to handle this huge roster, but, like Rosa, we think Bayo's gonna start climbing too. Nintendo has given her some solid buffs that aren't gonna make her high tier right away, but will make her hits more consistent and rewarding. Bayo has a tough road ahead of her, but this is one bad witch, and she might be able to handle it. We're still not quite done with the Smash former top tiers. Like his top tier friends, Cloud also took the nerf bat beating all the way down to mid tier. We know that Cloud's seen some good results from Spargo too, but that's not enough for us to move him up tiers. Cloud has good disjoints like lots of sorties and can control space and neutral, but since his limit is timed now, it's easy to camp him out and avoid his kill moves. His recovery without limit also hurts him quite a bit, especially against characters that can stall out offstage or edgeguard. And that's a lot of the high and top tiers. That said, he's still a solid character with good options and lots of potential for cool plays. If we want to talk about characters that have a great player giving them great results, then we should talk about the Belmonts too. Riddles is the... Wait, what? Riddles dropped the Belmonts? Oh, uh, that's awkward. So anyways, the Belmonts are kind of like Cloud, where they've got great disjoints but a bad recovery. However, these two are more mid-range zoners than sorties, and their deal is forcing the enemy to move in patterns they like and can punish. The Belmonts are great at mid-range and excel versus heavies and characters that can't close the gap. They can also be surprisingly flashy, but that recovery and the lack of defense against rushdown makes them mid-tier. Other zoners in the higher tiers do their job, but better. Alright, now if we really want to talk about a zoning character that gets carried by the player, we gotta talk about Duck Hunt. Raito gets serious results for Duck Hunt, but not too many people have been able to follow suit. Duck Hunt has some awesome projectiles that are super hard for opponents to figure out. However, Duck Hunt also has a very exploitable recovery and not many great kill setups. So Duck Hunt can rack up damage, but can still lose from not finding a kill and getting edgeguarded. That keeps these two in mid-tier. Honestly, mid-tier is the spot for solid but not suffocating zoners, just like Zelda. 
Her range, as well as some of her specials and ground moves, give her a hard to break defense. However, her aerials aren't great, she's slow, and a lot of her options are committal, which makes her neutral kinda tough to manage. Like most mid-tiers, she's not a character to sleep on, and she has good players like Ven who get big wins with her, but like most zoner mid-tiers, this character is gonna cause more trouble in quick play than in tournament. While we're talking zoners, let's talk about the secret zoners. One of the biggest is King DDD. Uh, literally and figuratively. DDD is the heavy who zones with just one projectile. DDD's Gordo is one of the strongest and weirdest projectiles in the game. It can be launched at several angles and has lots of tricky properties, so it's tough to beat without matchup experience. The Gordo pushes players into situations where they have to act. From there, DDD punishes their move with a big hit. So DDD has a good game plan, but like lots of heavies, he gets comboed easily. He's also got the mid-tier zoner weakness and gets rushed down pretty easily. Then there's me Sword Fighter. This weird me seems like it could be a swordy, and can be, but more often gets played like a zoner. Sword Fighter kind of works like Robin, using range tools like the Chakram to threaten the opponent and a good disjoint to scrap at closer ranges. Like Robin, Sword Fighter also has a kill setup that's a bit too notorious. Everyone knows what a Robin or Sword Fighter is fishing for, and at the top level, players get good at avoiding the bait. Outside of a few good range tools and kill setups, Sword Fighter is decent, but not great. On the other hand, Toon Link is the swordy you might expect to zone more than he does. Toon Link has good range tools, but these tools often work better to help Toon Link's approach rather than just zone. Good Toon Links won't just throw their bombs to stuff enemy approaches, but hold it to make their own approach harder to beat. Toon Link also has some pretty cool combos and conversions. Toon Link stays at mid-tier because his hitboxes aren't that great for a sword character and his recovery is not great either. He's good, but like other mid-tiers, he gets muscled out by other characters that do the whole mixed range and combo game thing better. Lucas is a bit like Toon Link too, with a good range tool that can play keep away and with some solid combos. He's got some very cool tech with his Zare and his aerials too, and of course, he's also got raw kill options. The problem is his weak recovery and lack of options that lead into combos or into kill moves. He could fish for a grab or raw attack to kill, but at high levels that kind of game falls apart. He also doesn't have a ton of results because Ness is similar to him in style, but generally stronger. Ness's PK fire is more threatening because it leads to a follow-up. Ness's combos are more successful and consistent too, and Ness's grab game is better because it can lead to combos and kills. So poor Lucas gets overshadowed and stuck in mid-tier. Okay, we're done with the zoners, so now let's get some fast rushdown characters in here. Starting with Sheik. Sheik has combos, follow-ups, and so many quick moves and mid-range tools to win neutral with. The problem is, she's gotta win neutral like six times more than her opponent does to win the game. Her kill potential is just that bad, and her damage is pretty bad too. Sheik might have the worst kill power in the game. So while she's fast, flashy, and pretty fun to watch for the first part of a stock, she's tragic in the second half. Seeing a Sheik try to kill a 170% middleweight is enough to make a person main Roy. And then there's Sonic. Sonic has some super serious character loyalists like Supergirl Kells, Sunito, and Ken. That might be because his quick speed and tricky specials give him a unique neutral game. Sonic is a pretty elusive character that's good at creating opportunities for short strings and stray hits. Unfortunately, he can struggle turning those small openings into big opportunities due to a lack of great kill setups. He's also got a janky up air, and that's brutal because Sonic relies on juggling and meeting opponents in the air. Ultimate Sonic isn't as bad as Sonic Boom, but is no Sonic the Hedgehog 2. He's like Sonic Colors or Sonic Adventure 2, but without the hyper-intense nostalgia over the chows. Okay, now we can talk about two of the hypest mid-tiers. First up is Ganondorf. This is Nintendo's most high-risk, high-reward character. Ganon can take a stock in three hits, but lose one in three hits too. Ganon has a bad recovery and pretty bad mobility that makes neutral tricky. If he gets in, he can do surprising work because his aerials are fast, gigantic, and super powerful. The problem is closing that distance. Ganon struggles against zoners and even against fast combo characters that can bait out attacks and punish him. He is a total end boss. If he hits you, you're gonna feel it, but you play him enough and then he's not gonna hit you as much. Just like an end boss, he was super intimidating early on, but people studied up on him and now he's not the biggest threat. 
Last, but truly not least, we've got the Ice Climbers. Nintendo's original dynamic duo is back, and with tons of hype setups. This is one of the few characters that actually got a buff in 5.0. The AI Climber can now ledge trump characters, potentially opening up some cool new spike and ledge trapping setups. The buff could be big or small, and we need more tournaments to tell. We put Ice Climbers in mid-tier because they have some really good tools like their side special, their grab combos, their up airs, and their up smash. They aren't higher because they don't have great range and can get walled out by disjoints and projectiles. Plus, they rely on a lot of grabs, and grabs are slow and punishable in Ultimate. And, as in all games, you kill one climber and the game gets a lot easier. And now we've got the B-tiers, the ones that are almost a top tier, or in some cases, even fell from top tier. In fact, we got a spicy move for you right out of the gate. It's everyone's favorite character to yell about. No, not Palutena, not Snake either, no, 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 not Joker. We're talking about Hero. Listen, when Hero came first, we had to work off limited info and put him somewhere. We put him in A tier because of how deep his kit is and the potential it has. So far, he hasn't really had A tier results and is mostly used as a secondary or dual main. Hero is still a good character that has great projectiles and defense. He may also have the most raw damage in the game between his specials, his different spells, and oh god, his crits. However, Hero struggles against edgeguarders, rushdown, and sorties, and mostly goes even with good zoners. Guess what the high and top tiers have a ton of? Rushdown, edgeguarders, sorties, and good zoners. So Hero's good, but not that great, and no one's that mad anymore, so you can stop driving that meme into the ground. We can't talk DLC without talking Banjo! Banjo and Kazooie are in Smash, and they're looking pretty good. Again, we gotta put them somewhere with limited information. Right now, we're going for B tier. Banjo and Kazooie have some great tools in their Wonder Wing and Rear Egg, or Grenade. These tools are great to catch people and to make players think twice about their approaches or options. This duo also has room for optimization due to their good edge guarding, drag down aerials, multi hit moves, jab resets, and grenade setups. We put them in A tier for a hot minute, but readjusted to B tier. Their grabs are also wonky since up throw doesn't combo well and down throw is very mash dependent. We know Zachary tore up a tournament in Japan with these guys, but matchup experience cuts both ways. For right now, Banjo's B tier, but we're working on limited info, so this character could go up or down soon. While we're talking about tier movement, let's talk Young Link. We brought Young Link down from A tier to B tier too. Young Link still got some stuff, mainly some nasty combos. Young Link has good speed and a cool mix of zoning and rushdown tools. This kid can put on the damage. However, since Tweak dropped Young Link and only brought him out once just to get bodied, he's looking more mid-tier than high-tier. The lack of kill potential and the bad recovery are starting to show for the once and future Hero of Time. While we're talking about Link, let's go ahead and talk about Link Link. You know the one. The one and true Link has a pretty interesting style. He can use his bomb a bit like a shine or a zare, disrupting opponents and getting a free follow-up. Or he can use it like a trap, walling off a part of the stage and pushing opponents into a bad move. Link is an interesting character because in different hands, he could be totally fundamental or totally tricky. He's got good tools in neutral, good out of shield options, and some good raw kill moves. He just doesn't have the setups, the rushdown, or the zoning to put him in high tier. He does a lot of stuff pretty well, but a high tier needs to do at least a few things very well. There's a rumor going around that if you say, good out of shield options three times fast into a dark bathroom mirror, then Mr. Game & Watch will appear behind you and force you to play on flat zone! <clears throat> <clears throat> Mr. Game & Watch is a character to watch out for because his defense is as frustrating as that terrible pun. Game & Watch has crazy frame data and some of the best defensive options in the game. He's super tough to nail down, and Meister has used him to beat top-tier characters like Snake and Pikachu enough that he's a bad matchup for them. We predict that Game & Watch will only get better with results and rise up tier lists because he's such a bad matchup for some top tiers. We're keeping him in B tier for now because he still struggles against disjoints. We've got one more B tier that we think will pop up the list, and it's Falco. Falco had a rough start in Ultimate because he wasn't like Melee or Smash 4 Falco, so a lot of players didn't know what to make of him. With time, people are getting a better understanding of the character and playing him more. That translates into results too, with Juice switching from ZSS to Falco and seeing some big success. It also helps that as the game ages, edge guarding, drag downs, and multi hit combos are looking more and more important, and Falco's got all of those in spades. 
He's still got weaknesses like an all right recovery and over reliance on certain moves, <coughs> up tilt, <coughs> but he's looking good. If you're looking for another late bloomer, then check out Luigi. At the start of the year, Luigi was looking rough. At first, he was just a grappler with a pretty punishable grab, and now he's still a grappler with a pretty punishable grab. But he's also got lots of quick get off me moves. That makes him good at fighting his way out of disadvantage. And his grab game is so strong that it's worth the risk. Elegant made a total turnaround this year and has started showing just how dangerous this character can be by using a mix of grabs, zares, down specials, and aerials. Luigi's not in a higher tier because only Elegant has shown big results and because of Luigi's severe lack of range. He's got his zare and fireball, but he can still get zoned and walled out pretty hard. You know how we said grabs were worse in Ultimate? It's true, but it doesn't mean grapplers are bad. Leon has done what Elegant did, but with Bowser. Bowser might just be Ultimate's premier grappler and heavy. Unlike most heavies, Bowser has pretty good defensive options. If Bowser's getting comboed, it can be hard to break out, but pressuring him into getting comboed is hard because he has a great out of shield option. He's also got surprisingly good strings and insane shield pressure from his command grab and shield breaking down special. Bowser is a terrifying stock eraser in this game. The problem is, he can get camped out. Savvy players will pick characters with the right tools to camp Bowser, and they'll win, like the Buzz did with Rosalina and Nairo did with Robin, both against Leon. Let's talk about another terrifying character, We Fit Trainer. This soulless fitness machine will down air you into oblivion. We Fit is pretty solid at every part of the game. Her deep breathing gives her moves great kill potential, her moves and strings do solid damage, and her volleyball helps her fight her way out of disadvantage. She's only in B tier because she gets outboxed by the high and top tiers that have more tools or better frame data, hitboxes, and setups than her. That and a lack of results. We Fit Trainer is in kind of a weird spot where none of the big names main her. However, she does have regional and local players. That makes her have a few upsets on big names, but not many big placements. Rounding out the scary, underplayed characters is Ryu. Ryu and Ken got crazy buffs early on in Ultimate and basically shot up everyone's tier list. Ryu has an insane combo game now and serious kill threat with his heavy jab conversions, his shield breaker combos, and his SHORIUKEN! The buffs also made Ryu's Hadouken a real threat. So what holds Ryu back? Honestly, it's Ken. Ryu and Ken are the same archetype, called a Shoto, meaning a traditional fighter that wants to get in and punch the crap out of you. Both Shotos are weak to getting camped out and edgeguarded, but Ryu's true problem is that everyone plays Ken. Players go to Ken because Ken gets more speed, approach tools, and kill power. Ryu just gets a better projectile. Since a Shoto's kit is more based on boxing than zoning, that projectile isn't as useful. So Ryu's getting outboxed by his Echo Fighter. Rough. But hey, pick who you like. Can you do better with Ryu? Sure you can- Okay, I'll stop. Now let's go over to the Cool Kids Club and talk about those popular characters. If there's a character beloved throughout all of Smash, it's Captain Falcon. More people know Falcon through Smash than through F-Zero. But hey, that's on Nintendo for not making a new F-Zero game, or not even putting him in Mario Kart. This guy is a professional racer, and Nintendo put the Inklings in over him. They even put his stages and his car in, but not him. Ice cool. But Nintendo made up for it with lots of Falcon buffs. Now Falcon plays a lot more consistent. He has lots of aggressive rushdown potential and can rack up damage quickly. Unfortunately, he's a bit too honest and can't get the early kills and advantage like other characters. And his recovery is as exploitable as ever. But he looks solid. Now here's the weirdly popular character, Ness. If you're on quick play, you know Ness as the little kid that will not stop shouting PK FIRE and trying to forward air you. But in bracket, Ness is actually pretty slick. This character has lots of combos and really elusive and interesting aerial movement. Ness is just good overall, with a mix of tools that help him edge guard, ledge trap, zone, act out of shield, or tech chase. That makes him pretty popular, and you can see Gact, Best Ness, Austin, and others do work with him. However, Ness gets held back by a linear recovery and lack of range. Yeah, PK Fire is a ranged move, but that firepower ain't nothing compared to Snake or Rob or even Joker. Speaking of children who make weird noises, let's talk about Diddy Kong. Anyways, Diddy Kong is another character that's perpetually making distressing noises. He's also another character that got awesome buffs. Now he can fly real high with his jetpack on, and with his pistols out, he's one tough Kong. He has a good neutral game with his banana and gun, and he has good strings and edgeguarding aerials. He gets held back by a lack of kill power, abusable range, and a mediocre disadvantage state. 
Like the other Smash former top tiers, he also doesn't have tons of mains because he feels less strong than he used to be. Speaking of classic Nintendo characters with an unknown age, species, and general taxonomy, here's Meta Knight. I guess he's supposed to be like a Kirby that made a knight costume? You guys will probably tell us about the true deep lore in the comments. Anyways, Meta Knight was looking very hot in the early meta, with really cool ladder combos leading to early kills. Now, he gets outboxed by other disjointed characters and struggles against zoning. He has a good offstage and combo game, but other characters have good offstage and combo games too, and they do more damage and kill earlier than Meta Knight. That just leaves us with one, Lucario. Everyone's favorite glowing blue rage energy raccoon dog thing. Alright, the deal with Lucario is pretty simple. His frame data isn't that great. He doesn't have many awesome raw moves. His approach is also pretty linear, even though he has a projectile. However, this dude still has the ability to frustrate opponents by getting early kills with a mix of rage and aura. Nintendo also buffed his moves so they have better hitboxes and connect more consistently. Right now, he's not getting a ton of love from the players, but he's still got that comeback potential and aura power that once made him popular. Phew! Okay, that rounds out the mid-tiers. This is one of the trickiest parts of the tier list to talk about. There are so many characters with such different representation. Some characters get carried by one great player, and others have tons of representatives that only get them so far. In a cast this big and this balanced, mid-tier becomes a huge cluster of characters, each one with pretty unique styles and matchup charts. We do our best to look at all the mid-tiers and the players pushing their meta, but it's easy to miss stuff when it comes to the middle siblings of Smash. Feel free to talk technique and hidden potential in the comments. I guarantee you, we're not the only one that hasn't heard the word about your favorite mid-tier. Maybe they'll get to high tier in time. But first, we're gonna need to see them go even with the best characters and overcome their bracket demons. And hey, maybe you're the one to get them there. Maybe you're also the next viewer that will subscribe to our YouTube channel. Unless you're already subscribed, then you're doing the work Sakurai has intended. We appreciate all of you, even if we accidentally just admitted that we think your character is mid-tier. But if they are, or aren't, after you make sure you're subscribed, go ahead and tell us in the comments below. We love to hear from all of you.